put him as Zed here, back with another Batmobile review. Even though it's not a Batmobile per se, it can become one. And those who have this vehicle, or at least know of it, know exactly what I'm talking about. It is the Bruce Wayne Custom Coupe. Converts to crime-fighting car. Bruce Wayne becomes Batman. And not only was this just a great, like, expanded universe vehicle, but it also gave us a nifty little Bruce Wayne figure in a uh, purple sweater. A very muscular purple sweater. <laughs> we all know Michael Keaton wasn't that muscular, but hey, action figures were. And then again, Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford weren't that muscular, yet their Power of the Force 2 figures were over-muscular. In fact, uh, Luke looked like He-Man with uh, Dobok. Ha ha ha. So anyway, this Bruce Wayne custom coupe, let's just say, you know, Bruce Wayne, he's driving around, he's custom coupe, notices some trouble going on at the First National Bank. Well, with a quick change, pow! Bruce Wayne becomes Batman. But enough about the box. You came to see the car, and most likely you came to see it in action. So here it is. The Bruce Wayne Custom Coupe. This was the first incarnation of this vehicle. However, it won't be the last. It was re-released just a year after as the Bruce Wayne Street Jet? I, I can't remember. I I'll, I'll, I'll post it when I remember. But it was re-released again under the Batman the Animated Series. And it was also re-released under Superman the Man of Steel with an exclusive Clark Kent car. Clark Kent figure. I don't remember if it was re-released again after that for the animated series of Superman. I never really got into collecting those. But here it is. And I can say it is a very nice design vehicle. It doesn't really belong in the world of Tim Burton. It looks like the car was designed for possibly something else. It just doesn't look like it ever really belonged in Batman Returns. It looked a little cartoony. But, you know, however the design of it, the myths, the legends of how this car came to be, we got it, and it was a fantastic vehicle. Open up the windshield and look. The windshield, it looks like a bat head. It probably was designed for Batman Returns. It just doesn't look like it belongs. Even the seat looks like, you know, a bat emblem. Take your Bruce Wayne figure here. Great likeness of Michael Keaton, though. It is rumored that they, I mean, not rumored, that they actually had a, uh, it was like the first time they ever, like, laser sculpted a figurehead. So, you know, they tried to get it as close as they possibly could. Let's say, you know, you're Bruce Wayne driving around in your custom coupe. All of a sudden, BAM! Oh no! First National Bank! This looks like a job for Batman! What you do here? Rear spoiler, pull it, POW! Now, Bruce Wayne is now Batman, ready to take on dastardly villains. With missile launchers. <laughs> now, we all know Batman just didn't, you know, change into Bruce Wayne. It's obviously two figures. And that's the beauty of this. Huh, doesn't even look like this comes out. What's awesome about this is you don't ruin any of the figures. 
when you pull it forward, uh-oh, sometimes they do like to get loose. There we go. When you pull it forward, the seat actually lowers. So the seat actually lowers while Bruce Wayne just, when he slides back, no harm done. He just slides right back and the seat, the front seat, the one that hides just as pulls up. And then when it slides back, the seat goes back down and no one is the wiser. The missiles themselves also have some very in actually it's attack card should be back with Batman. The missiles have surprising range. If I can get the fire. Pow. Try doing that with today's missile launchers. They don't go twice as far, and the propulsion is somewhat weaker than the 1990s counterparts. Oh, yeah. And the missile launchers can only close when the uh, car is... At least only with mine. Back to the design features. Like I said, it's wonderful design. They even added some to, like, the fenders or the doors. Actually, I guess they just call them fenders, the side panels. Little designs here, little uh, designs here. And, might I add, it is the first Kenner Batman car to feature taillights and headlights. Why on earth we didn't get them for the Bat Missile Batmobile released the same exact year? Some will never know. Another thing that is a little puzzling is I think the windshield was supposed to be larger. Just because there is this groove right here. And a little indentation here that looks like a, sh uh, a windshield was supposed to be. But somehow I guess it was just pushed up here. Whether it was a design flaw or intentional. Maybe it was supposed to be just a regular, you know, sculpted in bat emblem. And something was possibly supposed to come in here. I don't know. But otherwise, here it is, the custom coupe. Also, very nice. Underbody of the car. Very detailed. So that is the custom coupe. And I shall return with another... Batman type review in uh, in due time.